20 years later, 20 plus years, you could put on this album, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, and with the right kind of eyes, in Hunter's words, you could almost see the high watermark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to the Rap Lizards podcast, the only show where two Jews and a Guyanese dude talk about hip hop. I myself, Hot Benjamin, with you as always. <laughs> my name's Benny. I'm with my man Dion and my man Gary. How you doing? Yo, what Hot up? Benjamin is almost working for me. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be Hot Benjamin for ne- now. Next on. time, like I see, you know, close friends or family, I see your mom. Like, hey, how's Hot Benjamin doing? <laughs> I want to. I want it to catch on. I, you know, I, I'm a. I'm a professional. I want to answer the phone. Hello, this is Hot Benjamin speaking. See how it goes. Um, yeah, was that one of your aim names? I, I can't remember. You had so many. Was that one of your your, your, your no, messenger names? No, my aim <laughs> names were way more obscene than Hot Benjamin. <laughs> they Fair were. Enough. They were unmentionable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, guys. Uh, if you're a first time listener. The way this show works is we appreciate music. It's almost always hip hop. One of us picks an album that we love. We all listen, come back, and discuss what makes this album great. What What is it about this album that resonates with us and hopefully it resonates with you? We overanalyze music one album at a time. Um, this week was my pick, and I picked A Tribe Called Quest's album, Beats, Rhymes, and Life. In my opinion, it is the most slept on album by <laughs> A Tribe Called Quest. It often gets kind of dismissed as when they started to fall off, which I think is a, just an absolute shame because I see absolutely nothing wrong with this album. I think it's f- fucking awesome. Uh, so, I, I, you know, this was a this was a guaranteed we all come in, you know, appreciation level 10. Uh mm-hmm. Because our crew, you know, we've we've said it before, we all connect over Busta Rhymes. And the other the other constant is a tribe called Quest from day one with For us. For sure. For sure. Um, I remember I remember being in eighth grade with you, Dion. You you came over, we were chilling at my place and and you saw I had the CD with the reflective cover. Remember, it was like yeah, a ho- yeah, holographic yeah, yeah. cover <laughs> yeah. of this album. And you're like, oh shit, you listen to Tribe, and that was like, oh shit, we got a lot more in common than we thought we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you were like, yo, I love the song Jam. I love the song Once Again. I'm like, yeah, man, fuck yeah, you know what's up. Um, Gary, when did this this album come into your consciousness? Uh, you know, it feels like it was always there, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, right? really when it like kicked in, like, I think it was, you know, I'm like riding down a bumpy sidewalk with a skateboard with very hard wheels, wishing that they were softer okay, <laughs> and trying to learn to like Ollie or something or kickflip at night and like have way too many scabs all over my elbows and knees. That's when this <laughs> album really came into focus for me. That was what yeah. was, uh, what it was not in my head to at the time. So let's Feels call that, that anyway. let's call that freshman year of high school, right? Yes. That's when the skating in all of our lives really picked up and ramped up. Yeah. That's when, you know, possibly blunted headphones on, skating through the night seemed to really take take precedence. This is great skateboard with your headphones on music, by the way. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Tribe generally is though. Tribe yeah. generally is. Artists. In fact, if you remember, um uh, Ben, what skating game was it that actually had um a war tour? As as uh, one of the the songs, oh, it was like an old school original. Yeah. Was it Grind? No, it, no, what was it called no. Thrasher Skate Thra- and Destroy. Yeah. Stra- skate and Destroy, like exactly. The first attempt at making no. a skateboarding. Yeah, it was the first attempt at making a skateboarding game that was devoted to like realism. You know what I mean? It wasn't the most realistic thing in the world, but yeah, it ain't skate. It, it tried, <laughs> but... No, it it tried to make the physics. As though, like, okay, you have to push to move, and you have to stomp the trick, and it was a very, it was the first attempt at making something realistic, and did a pretty good job. And the music was all classic, boom bap hip hop. It was dope. You had, they had Ultra Magnetic on that too. That's know. right. That's right. Um, so why did I pick this album? 
you know, I could have easily, I could have easily picked the low end theory. I could have easily picked people's instinctive travels and their paths of rhythm. I could have easily picked my f- personal favorite tribe album, Midnight Marauders. Mm-hmm. Why, why did I pick this one? I think one of the things we started this show, and it didn't really, you know, it didn't turn out that we, we kept it this way, but one of the first ideas of doing a show like this would be to like pick the album in a, in a, in an artist's catalog that we love but the rest of the world doesn't necessarily re- revere. Um, right. And to me, the last two Tribe albums, this one, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, and also The Love Movement, those two just, they get hated on. Or they mm-hmm. don't get remembered the way the first three do. And I think there's that's reasons. A, it's, there's reasons. I think one of the reasons, the first reason I would think this one is is kind of pushed to the side is if you were a Tribe fan in 96 and you heard this album, you did not get the second Midnight Marauders. You got something different. You know what I mean? They, they mm-hmm. really, their sound changed. I think the sound change was incredible. Um, but th- their approach, sound, production, lyrics, a lot of things changed. It got a little... Mm-hmm little less positive a little less celebratory and a little darker um i think that's one reason why maybe at first this this album got got a little hated on and now i don't have you guys seen the uh the tribe documentary beats rhymes in life yeah mike rapaport yeah nope, it's, never it's, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 great it's fucking it's great it's great it's great um it's great but right it's great but i'd say one thing it does do and I don't know if it was intentional when when Rap Report set out to to do the the movie, was it does make Fife, rest in peace to the god Fife dog. It does make Fife seem bitter, and a bit hard to work with. And I'd say mm-hmm. when they start talking about this album in particular, they show kind of the. On the inside, it looks like the wheels are starting to fall off of this machine called mm-hmm. Tribe Called Quest at this point. So I think those are some of the reasons why maybe history remembers this album differently. Yeah, but why? And did just you choose on, this one? on, on... Of that, Benny. No, it's because I fucking love it. <laughs> it's because I think I think the beats. The, I think if it the one thing I love most more than anything else on this album is the production, and you can't talk about the production of this album without talking about Jay Dilla. You know, um, oh, I yeah. think Dilla's hands were all over this album. Uh, by this point, the production staff was no longer just Tip and Shahid. They started calling themselves the Uma. The and, Uma, yeah. And, and that had a lot to do with Jay Dilla and his influence. You know, Tip kind of he didn't discover Dilla, but when Tip, or he didn't, he didn't put Dilla on per se. Dilla was was doing his thing with with Slum Village already, but but mm-hmm. when. When Tip did discover Dilla, he took him under his wing and he presented him to the native tongues in the rest of the world. And that's why you that's why you have Dilla producing Wuha by Busta Rhymes. That's why you have, right. you know, these incredible Dilla produced tracks in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. And this this album, you could just kind of like if you're familiar with Jay Dilla's work, he's if you're not, he's one of the greatest producers ever. I would call him like kind of like the Miles Davis of Boom Bap production. Miles didn't invent jazz, but he certainly mm-hmm. reinvented jazz. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Dilla has this um, his his a lot of his the reason his his beats feel so funky and lived in and and human is because he he's very again he was again rest in peace to Dilla. He passed away, but um, he, he was very adamant about not quantizing your music right Mm -hmm. snap to grid was not in 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 his uh vocabulary once you quantize you take away the human soul so every drum you know every boom every bap every hi-hat it's his fingers playing in time you know what i mean there's not Mm -hmm. quantization and making it robotically perfect in time so there is this it feels like almost like a you're listening to a human drummer on a human basis because He's just playing the the MPC that you know his his sampling machine. He's playing it as an instrument in time, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So these beats feel very lived in, and they feel very organic, right? Um, 
Did so they that's, record this in the same place, guys? Did they, uh, did, they, did they get together in the studio for this, or was Fife in Atlanta already and recording from Atlanta? That's a good question. That, that's a that, good question. I mean, it, they say that the making of this album was the first time where Tip and Fife weren't really in the studio as much as they were on previous recordings because Fife had moved to Atlanta. He moved his family to Atlanta for whatever personal reasons he did. It made the production of this album perhaps a little more sterile and less communicative with the lyrics, right? Gary, can you notice that? You know, it's maybe maybe if I keep those words in mind and I listen to it again, Benny, I think it would make sense. I, I read it a little bit differently. I, it didn't feel sterile to me. It felt like felt different it felt like some of the concepts were like maybe cooked up in a in a in a lab or outside of a conversation where they're all kind of hanging out and feeling you know really on the same wavelength but the execution yes. i thought was really amazing uh so like take this song the That's hop fair. right like yeah, the song. hop so it's like a i think in my opinion a pretty cheesy concept for a song it's like let's come <laughs> up with a with a song where you do a move right like the electric slide but like <laughs> got to do the hop. Got, yeah you got to do the hop. but it's That's not a, though <laughs> but it's a dope song right it's i thought dope. the execution mm-hmm. was amazing just like everything yeah. else on this like you listen to this album and uh for me it's like a head nodding experience mm-hmm. the whole time very much in a groove it's yeah. very much a tribe album but 100%. it didn't feel as cohesive as a bunch of dudes coming from the same exact place coming up together at the same uh velocity uh yes. and having the same ideas right it felt a little bit more like a collaboration between unlike minds i i a little bit. I, I feel that Fair. i definitely feel it you could there's a there's a palpable tension i think on this album you know um i would say that tip's creative mind was beginning to be the, the the steering you know of this like i'd say tips creativity was the driving force of this and it always was but he always had fife next to him and, and there was mm-hmm. especially on midnight marauders i would say i'm going to compare them to pink floyd for a second not in their sound at all but they they followed kind of a similar trajectory where pink floyd had dark side of the moon and wish you were here where you could tell and it was evident that the whole band was operating as one unit it was one mind many arms you know what i mean and they were all mm, kind of mm. for the for the greater good making this beautiful collaborative work um and then once you get to animals you could start which is an album that i absolutely adore but you could start to hear that it was just roger waters's vision and they were just helping him achieve it rather than collaborating with him you start to see that on this album that's not to say there are there are songs where it does feel like a full blown they're in the same room like we you know possibly my favorite song on the whole album is is jam um mm. which is just like about a night out you know what i mean about going out with, <laughs> with your friends to a party but they i love how they each you know fife tip consequence who's on so many tracks on this album yeah yeah i feel like they were kind of grooming him to join tribe at this point i don't really know but um oh i think totally because he 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 produced a few tracks too he was on like at least four or five five tracks um and uh yeah yeah including this one but yeah yeah, you're right like that that back and forth that it goes especially what is it is it just the third verse i think or or is it or is it a whole thing but the whole thing that whole back and forth it's it's great and then and i do it again and um on wordplay wordplay is also yeah. another another song where same thing where it's just like that those are the ones where it's like all right we're, i mean they, they could have been in the same room yeah but but maybe not i don't know it's 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 it's, it's interesting to talk about because some of wordplay specifically like they basically each get what like four bars and then they sort of sw- uh, switch off that could yeah. easily be, be done separately like that that didn't yeah. have to be in, in in the same room but it's 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 uh it's curious uh yeah my, my inclination is to say that they that they weren't just just because of proximity and just where they were mentally with each other um mm-hmm. you know tip taking mm-hmm. taking uh his his islam faith faith more more seriously mm-hmm. fight fight moving to atlanta and then, like you said man like the adding of dilla and consequence essentially to the group <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Yeah. I think. I think. Kind of changed. Changed the dynamic and did make for a, a, a different sound of this. Not worse. Not better. Different. You know. Definitely different. But, but I would say those songs where they do trade bars. Yeah. I don't. I never get the feeling like, oh man, like they phoned this in from different states. Mm-hmm. I. I never get yeah, that. Feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I do get that feeling on other songs. On s- certain songs where Tip lays a verse and then Fife Fife lays a verse. 
you could kind of tell. It's like, okay, I laid my shit down. You lay your shit down. I'm not going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not to say it's bad. I still, you, I don't get the feeling on this album that I do on other albums where like they just weren't at all talking. You know, I, sometimes I hear a collaboration and you could tell a verse was recorded and then several months later they asked another guy to get down on that verse and it just yeah. doesn't really jive. It sounds emailed in. None of this sounds emailed in to me. Um, Agreed. But I would agree that there is there is a, a palpable tension hmm. and and rift between Fife and, and Tip. Tip's often staying on a few more woke ideas, a little more commentary, a social mm-hmm. commentary, and, and motivational and whatever, like a lot of different elements. And Fife, for, by and large, is battle bars, which I love. I'm a huge, I'm yeah. such a huge mm-hmm. Fife fan. Super um, impactful battle bars on this, like battle bars, see. punchlines. Yeah, love it. funny, funny rappers. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, such a good song. We t- all right, so let's talk about funny rappers. Yeah. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah. What a New York uh, song! What a New York <laughs> song! Yeah, seriously, song right? You have to be from New York to fully appreciate, <laughs> right? For real. I was riding the train when this Puerto Rican kid said "simple and plain." Let's <laughs> yeah, battle. Let's battle. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure that's happened to each one of us at least once. <laughs> I've been in several battles in high school. But, um, <laughs> spit a rhyme. Yeah, 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 yeah yo, exactly. Spit a rhyme. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Nate makes a good point. Um, it really is that 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 beat sets the mood for the whole album, right? Mm-hmm. You've never heard a beat like that on Midnight on, on Midnight Marauders on on beats. I'm sorry, on the Low End Theory mm-hmm. on People's Distinctive Travel. Those three albums are just they're jazzy and they're um, very rarely dark. This yeah. is an there's an ominousness to this beat. There's a, Absolutely. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a menace to the sound of this beat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. It's a little bit darker. It's you, you feel. I don't know about you guys. You could put this track on in the morning and you feel like you're listening to it at night. You know oh yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, like yeah. If you're yeah. The train that's a and running into this, uh, you know, battle situation, it's not a daytime train trip, right? No way. <laughs> <laughs> I lo- and I love tips. Tips intro verse, you know, he's just saying like I was riding this train. Puerto Rican kid let, said, "Let's battle," right? Kind of took me by surprise because you know he he's tip, but the brother was moving with his eyes on his prize. I said, "Screw it, mm. I ain't got nothing to do." But um, see, I got to do this shit real quick. So um, hurry up, uh, <laughs> you bust your verse, then I bust mine, then I be out because I got to meet this time. Like <laughs> it's like such a sick way to write. Like okay, just get your get your bars over, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's get let's get the shit over with. <laughs> uh, you know, and then he came back and just fucked up his head. Uh, I, I, so blah, 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 cool. Blah, blah, blah. That's what he said. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that that by itself, like that playfulness, right? That like yeah. not taking it so seriously is also part yeah. of why uh, making this a tribe album. This was a tribe album. This was a tribe 100%. album with a couple of additions and like maybe you know added uh, uh, you know logistical bullshit, whatever. But not knowing mm-hmm. any of that. You listen to this, you get a dry, you get a, you get a tribe album. That, that's something to celebrate. You know, that's like rare, rarefied air. I think is the is a, is a, is a way I guess you could refer to it. It's there's nothing else like it. You're getting a tribe album, and it's a little different, right? It's like I think I got the sense that maybe Tip, with his uh, evolution at this time, I think Tip was like evolving very quickly. He might have been in a mm-hmm. kind of groove in his career that is really rare, right? I think maybe this continues with Tip for maybe forever, but especially mm. then, right? I think he was really coming into his own and, and being very creative and, and putting out uh, material and collaborating in a way that uh, very few people were. So it's a little bit of like, get on the train with Tip. He's the, he's the conductor. <laughs> he was definitely the <laughs> conductor. That's him. a good way. 100%. Well put, Gary. D, what songs... Well, what, what, hold on. Let's talk about Fife's verse on, on Phony Rappers. I think it... it, it it bears. It needs just as much attention as. It's got tips two of the first. two of the greatest tribe bars ever. 
talk, talking about I need a Philly right before I get loose. Poor excuse. Money, please. I get loose up of orange Ugh. juice. I fucking love that shit. Love like, that, that is line. That is like one of the the lines that I think, the immediate lines I think of whenever I think of this album is, is, is that. When you um, think of Fife, you think of one-liners. When you think of one-liners from Fife, some of his best come from this album. Right. Yeah. We'll get into it in a little bit, but like he has a line, I think, on motivators. I could be wrong. Where he, it's just one line, but it's so '90s, it's so fife, and it's so dope. And you have to be familiar with all those things to appreciate it. But he says mm-hmm. you couldn't converse if you had fucking React juice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be a kid from the '90s to understand that that bar. React juice from Converse shoes. They were like it was like you know the next gimmick. Like oh yeah, it's like an airbag, but it's juice in your in your heel. It's bullshit, marketing <laughs> bullshit. But like you couldn't Converse if you had fucking React juice. Like Wait, you what? didn't you didn't learn to dunk in your Converse, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I always felt like I jumped higher and ran faster, but I don't have any scientific evidence to back that up. <laughs> Um, so his, his verse on phony rappers, you know, this is one of those things where you could tell they were in lockstep. They might not have been Mm -hmm. in the, in the studio at the same time, but tips talking about this, this battle that, that, that just, uh, you know, that went favorably in his way. And then Fife Mm -hmm. says, yes, Dredd, I have, I had a similar situation. When this kid tried to tell me I didn't deserve my occupation, he said I wasn't shit that I was soon to fall, looked him up. And down, grabbed my crotch and said, ball. Of course he tried to, tried to bring it on the battling tip. But you know me. You know I had to come out my shit. I don't know the next few bars. Forget, Forgive me. Um, um, uh, it just... <sighs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think it's such a cool... I, I'm sorry for the awkward pause. I just think it's such a cool way to start an album, right? Like... Sometimes MCs get so far away from like what the original MC's purpose was, which was to fuck fuck people's heads up. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that was at least at one point in the nineties, you know, mm-hmm. it was it was your job as an MC to hold your own. To to fuck people up in a battle. That was your job. You know, he thought an MC who was seen on TV couldn't hold his shit down up in NYC, you know, but he proved him wrong. I think it's such a such a simple yet creatively put song. You know what I mean? Hey, I wonder, I, it's something I didn't actually think about before, but I wonder if the title, Phony Rappers, are they talking about the actual other rappers? Are they talking about people thinking that they are phony rappers? Because that line indicates mm-hmm. that that's people thinking that they are phony rappers. But they're coming back and saying, no, 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 no. Just because I'm on fucking TV doesn't mean I'm, I'm fake. I will destroy you in a, in, a, uh, in a cypher. It's funny, dude. I never looked at it that way. I think but they're talking about I, the I rappers who do not song. excite. You know? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And they're definitely um, the sure. um the I the, there's nothing I actually didn't notice from this. So that that same line that I said before, the the Philly the Philly Blunt uh, uh, line, the the next lines I, I actually didn't realize how like genius they were. So so again, it goes to talking about I need a Philly right before I get loose pork excuse money please I get loose off of orange juice. Prefer, preferably minute make because that's exactly what it takes to write a rhyme, huh? So screw your nickels and your dimes. Oh. So I, I, it's, <laughs> that that's fucking. Dumb. I didn't realize. You know, again, it's a, one of those things. And I, you know, we said it time and time before. Uh, uh, again, you know, doing this show really brings that out. Where it's like, you know, these songs that like I've heard over and over and over again for decades. You know, doing this show makes me realize and point out little things I didn't realize before and ne- never made that connection. So that's that right right there is a, is a dope connection right there. Like preferably minute made because that's exactly what it takes to write a rhyme. Mean, in other words, like your your rhyme should take a minute or less. If it doesn't, then what the fuck are you doing? You know, mm-hmm. it's, wow. it's 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 this it's is great. rewind it's rap. Great, man. This is it's rewind. Oh, it's definitely rewind. It definitely, right. is. definitely rewind. Right. I would argue mm-hmm. that in these later albums, while yes, there are those noticeable differences from like their original work. You could find Fife at his most lyrical here. You know what I mean? His mm. most developed and advanced state is on this album, I think. And I'm such a big Fife Dog fan. You know, mm. I think he's he's the he's that underdog, like just scrappy, raspy voice, battle mm. bars, not trying to do much besides impress, but does it so well. You know what I mean? Mm. Like Rarely yeah. will, will you. I mean, he has his st- fair share of story songs. Let's let you. I don't want to oh, yeah. say he he doesn't. He's not capable of it. But f- like what Fife is best at is coming in, fucking up your head, 
you know, coming in, hopping out, hopping in, and just like making the song better. You know what and, I mean? But it and, doesn't screw with the song, right? Like he has a all. relatively never, simple, never. raspy style, but he does it in a way. He steps it in a way that enhances the song and keeps it in the pocket. You know, without interrupting anything. Basically, that's right. He doesn't. He doesn't mess like with he, he the just, vibe of the song at all. Mm-hmm. He adds to it, enhances it, but it it doesn't turn it into a totally different song when he jumps in. Hundred exactly. percent, and you, could, you and, can't and, say that about Tip. You can't say that about Tip. Tip, Tip definitely has a few songs yeah, where it's like he comes in and this is a Tip train song. conductor. You, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, right. to go. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, 100%, exactly. Percent, definitely. You know, you got songs like the Hop, where it's just Tip, right? Is it just Tip? I could be the wrong. Hop, I be, I be, there, there's a few songs where it's just tip. I don't think I don't know if the Hop is one of them, but there's, there's at least what like two or three songs where it's just tip. I think it's one yeah. where it's just five. But um, yeah, yeah but, that, but that's normal for tribe though. Okay, you're right. Yeah, you're okay. Right. Yeah, there's a few. There's like three tip only songs, I believe. I'm not mm-hmm. sure, but uh, at any rate, I'd say the beginning. This this album starts off super duper strong. Would you guys agree? Like the first mm-hmm. several oh, yeah. songs are just loaded. There mm-hmm. is there is some lag somewhere in the middle where it's not not banger after banger for me, but I think it finishes really strong too. You know, um, I have I have very little complaints about this album, which is what why it always brings back to I'm baffled by how it's remembered. I really am baffled why why it doesn't get the love. It I deserves. think I think it's be, just simply because they they they've changed at that point. Like again, it, it go it goes to like where each of them were at, which changed the the sort of music of what people are used to. Like people are almost used to like that flower power type of tribe, which again they did get away from a little bit. In Midnight, like people people was distinctive. That was like hippy dippy shit, right? And it was great. Don't, don't was be wrong. Great. It was it was great, wonderful. Um, but it was it was hippy stuff, right? Um, at midnight they got away from that a little bit, but there was still like that like sort of positive tribe. Same, same thing with low end. Um, so this is like kind of the first time when people are seeing them talk about dark shit, right? Like they mm-hmm. they they're talking about like you know like like being strapped. They're, they're talking about like you know one of them like you know um, um, hooking up with with the with the other one's wife. Like there's some like some pretty like serious subject matter in here that I think people aren't aren't used to because even tribe when they do, when they used to do serious subject matter, they still kind of made it a little bit light, right? Like it was it was it's not that they were like preachy, but it was you know they they. they they kind of like spun it to, to themselves where at the end of the day you still feel good about yourself whereas with this album there's quite a few songs where by the end of it you don't feel so great and that, that's not like to them that that's like kind of what they were i feel like you know what, what they were going for it's where they were um, at so i think that's where they were at exactly so i just think people i, I think that's the reason why why it's not as received as well because people weren't um uh they they, they weren't used to to, to the, this tribe at the same time though wasn't this one of their biggest commercial success albums <laughs> Well, I right, think right. the song once again was a huge hit, um, and, and and as well as um, stressed um, out, stressed out, stressed Faith, out. Those are two. Of the, Evans. The other. Once Evans, well, uh, once Evans, <laughs> once again uh, was nominated for for a Grammy, um, which doesn't mean fucking shit. I know, but but still, it was, it was nominated for a Grammy. Mm-hmm. It's actually the first. Uh, it was the first Tribe single that I could like, aside from Scenario, which I I don't even think count because Scenario is like in a canon on its own. <laughs> but like, oh, but before that, like, yeah, counts. like I knew, I, I knew a war to, it, no, it counts. But what I mean is this, like in terms of like, like Scenario is like, it, it's, it's on another level that that's like Buss's intro. That's like a collab between, mm-hmm. yes, it's a tribe, a tribe song. But for me, like I, I had heard it before, but as far as like solo tribe, um, I didn't really get into them until this album, which is funny. Hmm. Um, okay. like well, I, I, I'd heard right. a war tour, timing's heard, right? Ninety six, timing's right. right. Like you were, exactly. your your brain was ready. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So w- once again, it was actually the first the, the first like solo tri- uh, tribe track that I remember sort of hearing, seeing the video. I was like, oh shit, okay, yeah, they, they, I know these guys. Tribe Called Quest, they had that song. Okay, let me get into them, and that's when I started getting into them. Whereas a couple years later, Ben, when I, I was I rediscovered it with you, I was like, oh shit, you're into tribe, and then that kind of reignited my my love for tribe mm-hmm, again. Mm-hmm. Um, but the but yeah. But the point is, um, yeah, one, once again, um, and I guess to a, to a certain degree stressed out, the two like biggest singles from this um, were what sort of put me onto it. Um, but mm. uh, but yeah, again, they, they were huge commercial successes, both of whom used you know, R&B female, like yep. female R&B voices, which wasn't something that they did so much before. Nope. I don't all. think they had one song <laughs> with a female yeah, vocalist they finally made until friends. this. Finally made friends with yeah. some girls. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, and they choose and they choose Faith Evans, who's fucking hip hop royalty. Right, right. Um, yeah. You know what's you know, this, go, ahead, go ahead. Yo, I so, want to hear what you were had to say. So you know when we chose when we talked about uh, listening to this album, talking about it last time we were recording. Uh, I honestly didn't remember what songs are on here. I know it's from the sweet spot of like my favorite music 
right? And I was expecting it to be a nuanced uh, conversation, right? Because it's not their most uh, acclaimed album, etc., right? It's not maybe our favorite album. So I expected it to have its fair share of like, what the hell is this? This is misguided. Mm-hmm. But listening to this, man, like I was just shocked by how many of my favorite songs of all time are on this album. Like this is right? the, there you go. This you kind of it. paints that period for me uh, across all hip hop, say. You know what it is? The, the choruses on this album, I think, are very memorable. That's mm-hmm. that's what it is. I mean, you could say that about a, a lot of Tribe songs, honestly. Uh, so that may be kind of like a, a a wider statement in general, but definitely, because Gary, that, you're, you're absolutely right. The chorus to keep it moving is, is the guy. I, I always remember that. Ain't got no time for shucking in job. Like, it, it's dope. And, you, and it's, it's Tip starting to find his singing voice, yeah. which he uses yeah. even later on in, in his career. Um, he, Tip's got a great voice. He he, he, yeah. he really does. He has a, a great like singing hip hop voice. Um, but uh, but yeah, you're you're right. Like and, and of course the, the the chorus for once again, the chorus was stressed out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think there's, there's something to that. I think and that's that why beat, like it suddenly is. I mean, that beat yeah. for for keeping moving. Boom 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 boom. I mean, wow. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, it, it's really it, it brings me into that pocket without fail. And it, and that song, Gary. I'm glad you brought that song up. It, yeah. it it just it dates this album in a beautiful way, right? It puts mm-hmm. you right in the center of like the state of hip hop at the time, right? Talking about that, I'm not involved in your fucking beef right now. Keep yeah. that shit moving. That is like that was heavy at the time, right? People were about to get murdered soon after this, mm-hmm. you know, like. Biggie and Tupac and their camps were going at, you know, I'm not here to comment on that. I'm not here to say who's at fault or any of that shit. But what I am saying is that in the narrative of hip hop and media, that was that was what hip hop media was hyper focused on. East versus West. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think Tip is kind of seeing the danger in all of that. Fife has a line also on, on, his, on his the song where it's just him. Yeah. Where he says, like, you know, it gets uh, harder than death row b- bad boy confrontations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Tip's really trying to talk about, like, I'm not interested in any of that. I, you know, keep that shit moving. I'm not a West Coast hater. Um, you know, like, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. I'm going to keep exactly. staying in my lane, and that's not going to war with anyone. And to, and to go off of that, like, so, so Gary, you, you were saying that, like, on the surface, yeah, if you just listen to the song on the surface, it does kind of sound like like West Coast hate. But at the end of the day, it actually is com- the complete opposite. It's, it's exactly what Ben is saying. Like, exactly. he, there, there's a point where he's, like, he's basically saying, it's like, yo, I, I don't got no beef. So he basically said, like, yo, like, I, so, so just step off, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so the, if, if you want to interpret that as a little bit of aggression, but it's, it's more aggression to, to be like, I, I'm aggressive because I don't want to be part of your bullshit. Mm-hmm. To the mm-hmm. point where if, if, at the very end, he lists, like, beautifully, like, shouts out artists from all, from both coasts and, like, yep. in, in a change them like he yep. I, I i i can't remember exactly uh, uh who right now my but, man uh, but it, 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 you know we do Actually, it yeah uh, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we know we do uh, it uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah man yeah it's um, but um but yeah so like so that that's his attempt at, at sort of uh, uh, what's funny even though this like we just said this album kind of departs from the normal tribe that in itself is very tribe it's yeah trying to keep the peace and being all about like you know like the the, 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 the you know okay just just being peaceful and not not trying to get get involved in the drama that that's what tribe is all about like they they have their own drama to deal with and they they even mention that um i think uh, there's a there's a line that the tip says on on keeping it moving in the first verse where he's essentially like look we got our own problems to deal with we don't we don't got time for your for these problems and i, I think that was a nod to the uh to the issues that they were, they were having with, within tribe it was just like yeah we mm. we like there, there's some bullshit going on uh, uh here so i i want nothing to do with your shit like i, I understand what you guys are seeing or are, are dealing with but we're we're we're, we're watching from afar we, we we got our own right shit to deal it's with. a pretty I, bold move i think to take things mm-hmm. in uh, a different direction than the mainstream i think was moving to right because exactly. this was on the border of i think what we've been referring to as the shiny uh shiny jumpsuit era right this is right yeah. right up against Within the shiny jumpsuit era which is very different about, from style yeah it's about a year and a half two years away from mm-hmm. the 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 jiggy just you know yeah. popularization of, of hip-hop you're right gary like, gary you uh you, you're you're right though like it's um like how easy would it have been for them to just pick pick the side I, i'm not even gonna say pick a side because obviously it would have been new york <laughs> um <laughs> But how easy would it have been? Because at the time, like I mean, wh- how many rappers were just itching to get a, to get part of it to be part? Jump, like, deep. Like, Nas, yeah. you had people jumping in. You really like, did. Itch, ready, ready for fucking battle to, yep. for this East Coast West Coast shit. And again, they they were the the, the lone artists that were that were like, nah, you know, we're, I'm good, I'm good. 
I wouldn't say they were the lone artists. I would say that they were the artists maybe most vocally Fair. Say, like, uh, pro- protesting the even the, the very notion that rappers should be beefing with each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I th- I, th- I think it's cause I think it's the reason why you know the Queen of England doesn't wear you know contemporary design fucking clothing, right? Because uh, you know she's Queen of England, she was the trendsetter, right? She could dress in the uh, the royalty shit. Yeah, that, right, that's, that's actually really that's actually a really good point. I know I know it's it's kind of funny. Like uh, we're, actually, we're both laughing, you know, but I'm surprised. <laughs> why am I surprised? Because you're a fucking shark right now. Why am I surprised? <laughs> but but uh no i was just i was gonna say that 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 uh, that is a, a really 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 good point um which uh, i actually kind of forgot now because my train of thought has been queen of england <laughs> outdated the style. queen of england no uh, you're you're, absolutely, you're you're right like i mean it's the same thing with queen it's funny because uh, me, me and kate are actually watching the crown right now i don't know if you guys are watching that show it's good, on, uh, on netflix it's really good it's really good um but uh but they they, they kind of touch on that kind of stuff where it's like yeah, yeah the, the queen and the royal family yeah they 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 want to be part of the the mainstream I'm sure like at least part of the family like it would be great if they could like you know join the, the mainstream but like the point is like they they feel like they need to keep that tradition because like you know they, they're they like you know I'm, I'm gonna relate this back to tribe because they're one of like the sort of pioneers of this like uh, new age style and they're, they're like sort of godfathers of, of new york so in their uh, in their eyes i think it also is kind of like a um not, not saying they're too good for the uh for, for the beef but they're like all right look that, that that's just for the birds like we, we're, we're we're not we're not dealing with this shit and i think that i think that is, that does relate back to what gary was saying about the royal family it's like it's it's almost it, it is almost like like it's like they're 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 above it <laughs> you know like they don't i don't know does that, does that make sense but maybe maybe, I, maybe i'm riding the gary wave a little uh <laughs> a little too yeah, much i think, I think uh, you don't want to get no, on that train. we all need more gary wave in our life we need, yeah we need more gary wave exactly i'm not uh, gary i didn't say it was a bad thing i just said i think i'm, I'm riding on it but i think i I think I do agree with you. I think that that actually is a really good point. For sure. Yeah, I guess like to to extend to to extend that a moment, like the uh, they can do. I guess when Tim when Tip is in that pocket, right, and when they're working yeah. with that group of collaborators, and Fife Dog is royalty, and they're all kind of coming off of their most creative peak, uh, mm-hmm. they can they don't have to jump into whatever the current trend is that's giving new musicians momentum. Like they've accomplished what. Uh, far beyond what most musicians would want to accomplish by this point in their careers. This is album number four. Uh, so yeah. I think that they're well within their rights to stick to whatever, and especially since their whatever was a, a peaceful and positive vibe that connected New York and all of hip-hop right through half of the decade. Mm-hmm. I'm with that, Gary, 100%. Yeah. And, and I'd like to... I would like to piggyback off that and say that all of the greatest artists in any genre of music, they don't really, you know, I'm going to go back to a quote from Royce's album, The Allegory. Pay attention to the art, not the wave, right? Mm-hmm. If, your, yeah, music, yeah, yeah, if yeah. your music doesn't age well, then you own 100% of nothing, right? The greatest artists don't ride the wave. They, they do them. Busta Rhymes, Wu-Tang. Nas. None of these people are guilty of just completely giving themselves over to what was happening in the moment. They just put out their art mm-hmm. and their art spoke for itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, There was a yeah, quote 100%. that came to mind, Benny, like related to that point. Like <clears throat> one of my favorite writers is Hunter Thompson, right? The guy who wrote Fear yeah. and Loathing in Las Vegas. I know, Dion, you're into his work, too. And of course, I got a in- tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> too weird to live, too rare to die right. for our I YouTube audience. Came with you to get that tattoo. That is a beautiful yeah, piece man. of art. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, anyway, so in, in Fear and Loathing, Thompson goes into this spiel toward the end of his book about how he's thinking back at like to a, an era in his life, which was, uh, I think, a lot closer in relation to when the book was written. I think he was talking about a mm-hmm. distance of like five, six years. We're talking like 20 plus years looking back to the era of, mm-hmm. of Beats Rhymes and Life. Uh, but I think the words really probably says, you know, strange memories, right? A couple of years later, it seems like a lifetime or at least a main era since the kind of mm. peak that could never come again, right? And mm. I think in this case, applying Hunter's words to this album, I think New York City in the middle 90s was a very special place to be a part of. Uh, Hell yeah. And in the long run, uh, no mix or words or music or memories can touch that sense of knowing that you were kind of there at the time. But now... Mm. 20 years 
later, 20 plus years, you could put on this album, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, and with the right kind of eyes in Hunter's words, you could almost see the high watermark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled mm. back. Which is Gary, that, that is actually, that's my favorite part of the book, actually. I know it's sort of towards the end, yeah. but he's basically like summing up. But yeah, yeah, I know exactly. That That is my wow. favorite sort of like cut from the, from that book. That's a great, it's a great book, Ben, if you haven't I don't know if you guys it. can see, but Gary, hairs are standing up, man. Aww. Thank you. It's, that, it's was like, that, was, that was hard, bro. Like that, that fucked yeah. me up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's Thank true, you. though. I never, I never made that connection, Gary, but that's, that's genius. It, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, wow. Man. Because, you know, we get music from from this group of people later. I mean, look, we like even the latest Tribe album that was released with Busta Rhymes standing in for, mm-hmm. for a lot of Fife, uh, for some of the mm-hmm. album anyway. Yeah. You get that, you get you get back to that magic, but not quite in the yes. same way as this album does, which is right 100%. in the middle of it. 100%, Gary. I was going to bring that album up in saying that it kind of shares some DNA with this album in some of the sonics and some of the evolution that takes place it doesn't you know that album sounds more like this than i think at least sonically than any of the and we're talking about we got it uh what's the name of the title i'm sorry we, um, the, thank uh, you for your service we we got thank, it from we that's, the name of, that's the name of the album that's yeah the name of the album. The, that's yeah, what yeah, i'm talking about yeah uh, yeah yeah yep, yep yep so i mean i love that album but i'd say it shares a lot of dna with this album the vibes mm-hmm. of the beats and just kind of a little darker, a little heavier, um, mm. a little more political. Um, and Dilla. And- I think Dilla is a common thread with uh, A Tribe Called Quest and Busta Rhymes is contemporary music, right? You mm-hmm. use a lot of Dilla. Definitely. Definitely. Actually, how much how much yeah. Dilla beats, because I, I, so obviously he passed away well before um, the yes. latest album came out, but how many how many Dilla beats, if any, did they use in it? Like, I don't the think album? there's any Dilla beats, but there's an indelible stamp and an indelible influence that Dilla left on all of hip hop. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So like his DNA is there whether he pressed a button or not. You know what I mean? I'd like to do a song examination, right? I'd like to really break down Jam, if that's okay with you guys. this this, This song fascinates me. It really does. It's the one song on the whole album where I go, this is this is a high water mark for a tribe called Quest through any era of music, in my opinion. Right? Mm-hmm. It is a story told from the perspective of three different people about the same evening. It is a masterwork in sampling, and it it wraps up with a very a, a skit that makes it's like after you know it, it we could just disclose it ends in like someone getting shot at a party. But like mm-hmm. the skit at the end kind of makes me laugh too. You know what I mean? Like get in the car, put the AC on. They're all drunk. You know what? You know what you I know mean? Funny like about that? I never realized that that was Ali Shahi Muhammad doing. Like the, the the person the person whose voice you hear most in, nope. in that skit is actually yeah. Ali Shahi Muhammad. Just because you never hear him talk. The ones go, so, ooh, so baby. Like, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Ooh, baby. That's yeah. that's Ali Shahi Muhammad. Uh, <laughs> I never I never heard. I never knew what his fucking voice sounded like. Like that's I had no idea that was him until I, until I did this. Anyway, go on. Ain't no Muhammad, man. Ain't no Muhammad. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still I can't because he's a, like you look at Ali, Sha- Ali Shahi Muhammad and he looks yeah. so chill mm-hmm. and so quiet and everything like that and that could uh, you know in real life it you know he's probably the opposite who the hell knows right um, but yeah you just you just never heard him talk so like it was a surprise when I'm doing this this album uh, uh, deep dive and I and I'm seeing like you know the lyrics and it's like oh that's that's Ali because and he does say Al uh, like, Tip does say Al at the beginning so that mm-hmm. indicates who it is uh-huh. but yeah just I don't know just like a funny little thing it just the one time you hear him he's like talking wild I, I think it's great I just have uh, even that more flew stuff right over <laughs> my head until yeah. Me me right too. <laughs> Me too. I had yeah, no. I had idea. no idea. So, so the song, right? Let's talk beats first, right? Just yeah. dope, funky piano. Boom, 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 boom. boom it's an old bossa nova sample. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the the lay the, the the layer underneath the 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 constant, and then between verses, you have this dope jazz guitar sample. Ba-da-doo, <laughs> yeah man so and, good. and it's so good and it's it's a stark contrast that is a lead instrument right how how often do you hear a, a hip-hop beat where there's a lead instrument you know what i mean usually everything mm-hmm. falls into place but this lead instrument changes the dynamic of the song so much it breaks it up it it, it kind of shows a change in time during the day or yes. something it's like yeah. it kind of it it, it it in itself tells a story every time you hear that guitar. It's a marker, basically. It's like next it's scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it breaks up the scenes. I love that. The beat is so... 
dope. I always wanted to hear like a jam band do a do like a rendition of this song because it's such a it sounds yeah. it sounds like a band is playing this song. Ben, you know I, mean? I, I recommend listening to the original song. Then it's called Dur- "Dirty Old Bossa Nova" by the Howard Ro- Roberts Quartet from okay. 1963. Okay. And that the, the, wow. the song is basically this. <laughs> it's basically this. I gotta check it out. Okay, well, it it's up. masterfully made into a hip hop track, in my opinion. It's so yeah, human. Yeah, agreed. Um, Wait, so, like, this is a track. And the, and like, the, Tip found it in a record store. Uh, you know, at the time, uh, he was, uh, you know, something like that. But that's the case for records, if being there Sunday it, morning, much. Black Friday style. Everybody's digging going exactly. The rack. <laughs> yeah, man. That's the case of almost almost every song on this on this uh, album has some kind of uh, of old school sample from like the seventies and sixties. I mean, you feel you, you see a theme going here with all the albums we've been doing, guys. Right? right. Like they all of these songs sample from sixties, seventies, uh, old R and B, funk, and uh, soul gospel songs. You know, um, so that this this definitely is is one of them. Tribe is the pioneer, mm-hmm. or not pioneer, but they are like they are again. I'm going to use the same terminology, the high watermark of digging for that amazing sample that, when you use it, just makes the perfect hip hop song. With with you know, digging is is a part of the DNA of of hip hop that truthfully is being lost. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, our man Fred, who who joined us, Red Walrus, on our Dell the Funky Homo Sapien episode, he talked about the new the new lane for hip hop is to do sample free music, meaning musicians making beats that sound like they were samples. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you don't have to clear royalties and you don't yep. get sued if you don't clear the royal. It's just royalty free music for you to use at your leisure, right? Now, there's also like there. There's also a trend of people making weird like hiccup sounds, you know, and like well, yeah, y- yelps new, and screams. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. I'm not good. a big fan of that either. I mean, I, we, we should I, do I a Young that. Thug album at some point. We'll see how we feel. Okay. Well, you have every every three episodes, Gary. You you get you get to lay us with a you know <laughs> with a with a Young Thug album. Get to hook um, you up. And that's not my point. I'm digressing. I know. I'm, I know. I'm I know, saying. I know, I know. I'm saying that the 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 search for the perfect. A weird sample that nobody heard yet, but could be the, the next hit. That's dying. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, it, we there's still music that does include samples, but it's no longer the. You know, f- f- the, it used to be that these super producers like Pete Rock, you know, like Large Professor, Premier. like Q-Tip, like DJ Premier, like RZA. It the, part of that job was digging through old records to find these these weird breaks and these weird awesome sounding samples to like mm-hmm. make a hit but that that doesn't really you know that's not required anymore so it's a lost art um there's, there's a great uh, nate point out too there's a great i might, it might happen a couple times but in, in hip-hop evolution there's a, a, a at least yeah. one scene i can't remember where the but super like, yeah, producers just, episode just, that's a great, yeah this, exactly yeah exactly great exactly episode. exactly just digging yeah. through the crates like that's yeah. and, and i mean I, i'm sure all of us have been to record stores and like you know you, you dig through crates next thing you know it's a half hour later and you're still like looking at these it's just it, there's something about the digging man like it's 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 fun and i'm not dj at all we're not djs mm-hmm. but like there's something about like i mean in corona times you don't you know do that as much but like getting your hands dirty and thumbing through the different album covers and like buying an album because you like the the the, the cover you hate the artist like you know things like that were we're, we're fucking dope and you mm-hmm. may find a gem um mm-hmm. but anyway go, go on man well i just would like to wrap up you know looking at jam i mean i i mm-hmm. just think that it's like a masterwork in storytelling you're you're uh, yeah. you're engaged from the moment it was a friday afternoon in the middle of june Heineken mm-hmm. bottle caps, bottle caps, and the aroma of boom. Right there, it is. It's hot. It's bright out. You're sweating. You're drinking beers, and you're smelling weed on the corner. You know what I mean? That's one. Mm-hmm. That's two bars, or one, I don't know, one or two bars. Friday afternoon in the middle of June, Heineken bottle caps, and the aroma of boom, and you're there. You know what I'm saying? And then just it takes you through. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a true story, but it's three friends. Okay, we're gonna go mm-hmm. out. Yeah, we're gonna go out. Uh, you know, let's go. Uh, but it's telling a introduced... typical story, right? That yeah. like, we've all lived in a way. I mean, do you remember when you got introduced to that hydro smoke and you took one toke and you almost choked? Because I do. Yes. What, yes. what, what I remember <laughs> is like is like prowling, uh, like uh, what, what is it? Like what is it? What is the neighborhood around Beverly Road Church Avenue called? Uh, Kensington. Yeah, your neighborhood, Dion. Kensington. Kensington. Yeah, Kensington. Kensington. I remember probably around Kensington. I'm, I'm like, in it. I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, on our, on our skateboards, like, you know, in the evening, going to a house party from, like, somebody from high school, somebody's, you know, somebody mm. had, like, a free house or something. 
a little chemically challenged, but not all the way. Right, right, right. Still able to get around and find our way, maybe. Right. <laughs> it was a, it was a mag- it was a magical time. Mm-hmm. It really was. And this this was part of that soundtrack, right? Like I think like possibly we could be very not skewed, but bias. I don't know what a hip hop head who never heard this album would think. But like to me, this is like this is my life. This well, is my high school. I don't know if there's any hip hop heads that have never heard this album. That's true. That's true. They, I'm saying it, it maybe just maybe someone just getting into hip hop. Maybe it's you know? different now yeah, with yeah. Google Maps. Sure, sure, you don't sure. get lost, right? You have everybody's got phones, <laughs> right? Before, like we're going to a party to some house we've never been to. You get caught in a vortex. You're like, what? What part of the you know MTA stop that I just get off at? The back of the train, the front of the train lands you in totally different mm. neighborhoods. Around, you know, just kind of. Uh, That's true. You know what? Yeah, Mo- movies like The Warriors and Superbad would never happen these days because yeah, you would just call Uber. Absolutely. Go, oh, yeah, you know it's good. not hundred miles away. You know, it's like that, that line from uh, the first verse of the song, Benny, just continuing what you were saying. Yo, this is from a time when I didn't know no better. Uh, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Like things just things just happen. It's it's it, it creates mm-hmm. a it sets the stage for adventure. Hundred you know percent. And as the story, sorry, D, as the story unfolds, yeah. right, you get okay. We're going. We're ending up at this party. You get these attempts at trying to hook up with a girl, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. go anywhere. I love that, <laughs> right? So many stories about trying to hook up with a girl in a rap song end in like their heroic, uh, quote unquote, heroic ability to land the girl. But this is like failure. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, yes, yeah, granny, scran. That's that same old song. Tell me why the yeah. hell your breath smells so strong. You know, like, just like, <laughs> like. All of that, it's such a human song. It's such a just like, this is us in high school just being fucking denguses, but like trying to be cool. You know what I mean? I you know what this reminded me of? Totally there's actually, totally. there's, two, there's two other albums that we did that have songs that are just like this. Victor Vaughn, Let Me Watch. Yeah. <laughs> right? Whereas, again, a young kid. I'm not, sorry, that's the one thing we forgot to mention about Jam. This is clearly from not, not their grown up perspective but like from then when they were kids when like they were in high first party and everything yeah. yeah exactly exactly so victor von uh let me watch and then i can't remember but within red the last man superman episodes love it. superman love it there you go yeah where it ends with him like tied up and everything and everything's <laughs> going good and all of a sudden like she comes out with like the fucking Thule and like uh, yeah I, it's yeah that, that was great <laughs> superman but same thing lover. like it's like <laughs> <laughs> same thing though like it, it's it's a it's it's great it's like it, it puts you in that it's like you know they, they're not getting the girl at the end like they actually are having not i mean i don't want to say realistic because clearly, clearly this isn't a realistic situation or, or actually it could be um but the point is Based yeah, on they, something they, they don't get the girl in the end yeah yeah exactly exactly um yeah that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point <laughs> so i mean i just yeah I, I wanted to give that song it's it's proper attention because i think it's it's up there with all of their greatest songs. I'm talking like probably my favorite tribe song ever is Electric Relaxation. Like if mm-hmm. I had, if I were to pick one, um, and basically every song on Midnight Marauders, I think that's their that is the masterpiece. But I put that's that song in the category of all of their other best songs. It's it's a perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect song. Benny, can I make can I can I add to that? You know, I've been Please. playing uh, I've been playing NBA Jam uh, NBA Live recently. Uh, oh, on PlayStation, just in uh, in in my, nice, in my downtime, nice. and you could do this thing now where you could do like a nineteen, you know, the nineteen eighty six Bulls, right? Or you could do like the you know nineteen ninety three <laughs> Bulls, or you could do the all time Bulls. They got Jordan in it. Yeah, they got Jordan, and you could mix and match. Jordan's and in, a, in a NBA game now. Yep. Holy yeah, shit! Pretty, Times have changed. It's pretty awesome. I didn't Times know that he changed. wasn't before. Anyway, so he's <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he never game. he never gave his rights. You could, you could put together a team of like nineteen ninety five Jordan with like you know nineteen. 1980s, you know, uh, 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 rim guard, Magic whatever. Johnson, whatever. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if I could put together my dream team tribe album, it would be Q-Tip from this point in tribe's history, where he's this mm. far developed in his uh, style and ability, and like in his like groove mm-hmm. of evolution, and probably mm. uh, you know Fife Dog from the previous album, and you know it just I, I would combine I those and put them That's in a dope. room together. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like, please let's invent a time machine and, and see what would transpire. Yeah, exactly. If we did in the that. hot tub time machine <laughs> scenario fantasy basketball. of this podcast, this is what we would do. <laughs> Let's like fan, fantasy fantasy hip hop groups fantasy rap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's dope, Gary. I, I I I think I'm right there with you, man. Really, there's something, and that that speaks to. There is something special here, right? There's something really special here, and I don't know about you guys, but the only press I hear on this album is like, yeah, this is when Tribe started to maybe not be so together, and it wasn't the greatest album. 
uh, and then the love movement gets even worse press than this one and it's another album that i adore um but you know i think there's there's a lot special here that needs to be celebrated back in <laughs> um actually it's gonna be a good transition um <laughs> one thing uh <laughs> Hey, right, you know, never mind. We're not cutting any of this. Uh, we're not cutting any of this shit. Uh, um, Tribe does something here that another one of my favorite artists slash groups does in a track where in this on the song The Pressure, uh, the hook is just like past tribe songs. Like yeah. they, they just sample past tribe songs. Something so, similar that uh the Fuji's actually did in the title track, The Score. Okay. Um, where it's, yeah, ju- yeah. it's just comprised of like clips from like different uh th- I, I I love that. There's, there's something about that. It's not like it's not the same as like that. Uh, song theme that we've been talking about where someone like mentions like you know 15 different versions of like cookies or hip or labels or, or mm-hmm. things like that um but but it, it is something cool to right. like see it's like yeah but like, i i'm such a dope artist my, my i have so many like like favorite songs that i can make a song out of my old songs like that's, there's something about that that's fucking cool totally. and i love the way that song starts too d right just like yeah uh like a you got that dope beat that to me that's a very dilla influenced beat boom 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 boom, boom. Boom. You know, like just that extra beat, mm-hmm. boom. Like this is like so funky, mm-hmm. yeah. so funky. And then the cuts, you know, just like dope. I don't know who cut those records. Could have been Shahid. I don't know, but you don't usually hear Shahid cut up records like that. So it's like mm-hmm. a dope way to, yeah, dope song for real. Um, and yeah, I love the sample tapestry of their previous work. It's really it's great done it it, it kind of like you said it sets the mood like look at how much we already did motherfucker like like look yeah, at all exactly. of this dopeness yeah really good uh fuck yeah gary do you have any songs that we haven't discussed that like you just adore on this album or as that, you're talking you know... i'm hearing them in my head i'm thinking <laughs> boom 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 uh yeah I mean, all of these man like it'll I, that's a cop out answer, but I loved just getting into wow. you know I'll, I'll I'll start listening to the song I'll nod my head okay great and then it just gets inside me. That's what this uh, that's what this uh, album kind of mm. does to me. And I think that's uh, I think if if I could if I could summarize kind of the way that uh, you know my experience with this is that it took me back to a very good place uh, in my favorite era of music and. In my opinion, this might be some of the very best of the art form, right? So I was just very, mm. I don't know, I was happy to revisit a place that was familiar to me that came from my favorite era of hip hop. And I don't know, a kid growing up now, uh, let's say coming into, you know, the same age that we were at when, when this album came out, I don't know if they would find it quite as relatable. Like, you know, to, to well, what yeah. we were talking about earlier, like maybe that, that house party song would be a little bit different, you know, now that they're like, everything that has transpired yeah. since and all the technology and all the you know mm-hmm. different ways of interacting uh, are kind of mainstream where before it, it felt very analog and the sense yeah. of adventure that came through in this album uh was very much the flavor of life at the time uh so uh, anyway yeah. it took me back to that 100 percent, gary and and that to that point is there's always going to be those kids who do dig this even though they're from this generation i myself when I was in high school, I was listening to music from the 60s and 70s because that's mm. just what I was introduced to and what I fucked with. I think you were a step cooler than most, though. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I was I was, I was, was a fucking dingus, but in a cool way. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, there's going to be those kids now who would love and appreciate this. There always will be. But th- I'd say that this would fall into a kid which is this just makes me feel so old but if you put this on for most kids today they might be like what's this this is, like, old, school. This is yeah. old school and I'm, oh nothing hurts more than hearing that but you know like <laughs> uh yeah man i just think this is mood music you know what i mean like there is a a a constant mood even though positivity negativity different themes happen throughout this album it sets a certain tone and holds true to it from start to finish, and I love that about this album. There's a mm. consistency here. Mm. Is, is it you know? uh, is it baby the, making music? I don't know. 
I don't. I wouldn't I call this baby making. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. This is this is uh, at least for the, I wrote this note for the, for the hop, uh, but this could apply to the entire album as a whole. This is leather jacket, eye covering beanie, forty in hand music, <laughs> like <laughs> sitting on a Brooklyn stoop, just like nodding your head. And this and tribe doesn't usually have music like this. This is the closest uh-huh. that, that that tribe ever came to music where like, like exactly like this, uh, like three quarter length leather jacket, and like you can't see out of your Wu Tang beanie, like that, like that. That's the kind of music that this shit is, bro. Yeah. It's- <laughs> definitely the darkest thing they ever put out right let's, let, let, let's just just call it like it is it, it it's the darkest themed and the darkest sound they ever put out for sure. i wonder if that's the reason why they're following out the, the next album uh, uh love movement the co- album cover is literally just white it's just white <laughs> it's just a white void <laughs> with the text i wonder if that like literally that's the reason we're like all right we went dark for dark. that one <laughs> yeah exactly Maybe they were going called the love thing? movement <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's it was I think it, it I think you're right, Dion. It probably did play into that. Like let's make this as starkly contrasting to the dark yeah, exactly. tones. It's possible. And I like I, almost like almost sarcastic, but you know. <laughs> don't be surprised if we do the love movement on the show. Don't be surprised if we do any tr- other all of the oh, tribe yeah. albums. We They're all great. We, we as a crew are massive massive tribe fans. We were like one of the thousand people who bought Fife Dog's solo album. <laughs> <laughs> there's Which, another one coming apparently posthumously yeah i heard about that but i mean that album was yeah that's a trip unto itself i was obsessed with it and now i look listen back i'm like okay <laughs> this wasn't as good as i remember it. but um you know we're 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 in it we're huge tribe fans mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. i said all i need to say about it man i think it's it's just it's it's a, it's a time capsule like you said gary it is it is you know dark and and, and different but perfect. I, I have no complaints here. You know what I mean? I'd say maybe okay. One here. I'll, I'll do my one drink of hate of haterade. I think that the inclusion of consequence doesn't serve to make the album any better, right? Like so, it could have been yeah. better had it just been Tip and Fife bouncing off each other, rather than this this completely different vibe that Cons brought. I'm actually glad you went there, Ben, because that was actually going to be part of my last licks, but I'll, I'll say it here. Um, I'm done, by the way. I'm going to let you guys take it out. All right. Um, with, uh, with Consequence, I, he's, better, he's better after this listen than I remember him being. Okay. Like I always, I th- and I think part of that is because like whenever I thought of consequence, I always thought of Ben. I know you know where I'm going with this. Yep. That, yep. Same, that freestyle. Same. It was a you bet, Gary. You remember this shit? Really, really Gary, really I don't remember, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like with consequence, like, yeah. So guys, it was a freestyle um, for the audience. It was a freestyle, a tricore quest freestyle from like what the early nineties, I guess. Wait, wait, and wait. Like, can, we, can we say how we found that? It was a Napster. Go ahead. Like it was one of those things that like, oh, when Napster shit. first came out, and we were like, "What can we find to download?" Uh, we mentioned it in a previous podcast already, but it, I think it bears repeating. Um, yeah. You know, the, you Google Napster, and you would type in your favorite artist freestyle and see what came up that's how we found that you remember that biggie tupac freestyle at msg i'm not even sure if it was actually oh, big, yeah. biggie and tupac and, and no like, no no that, that's a famous clip okay that was, that okay. was from when they were friends yeah, yeah. okay so like you know but, but we, you're right we, we did we find found way, yeah. all these things on napster and then there was tribe called quest radio freestyle and it was tip not being incredible at freestyling and, F- and fife not being incredible but they're both holding their own it's off the top off the top and then Dion. Really shitty re- recording. Yeah. Really shitty uh, qu- quality, too. Yeah. But then Co- Consequence was on it, and he was so bad. Like, I remember he rhymed Consequence with Consequence, and then like, rhymed Consequence with Cons to the Quince. Yeah. And he also has a lit or had a lisp. I don't know if yeah. he got over it for, for this. Yeah. But, like, the whole thing, and I'm not I'm not shitting on anyone with, with, with a lisp or anything like that. I'm just saying compounded all that together. Yeah. It was just, it was, it was memorable rough. for the wrong reasons. It was rough. <laughs> and it's like it cr- was rough. cringy so, a bit. Cringy, you know, exactly. to the quince. He said it like probably fifteen times in like it was, a, and we've yeah. all been like any yeah. anyone who's attempted to freestyle yes. or attempted to run. We like, and this is why like I had sympathy for him because like, yeah. we've all been that we got stuck, right? Yeah, like, you're in the middle of something, so you just like you, you, your brain just reverts back to the last thing you you rhymed with, and then you next thing you know you're in a loop where you're saying the same word over and over. Like I like I commend him for doing it because guess what? Guess guess who wasn't on a freestyle that was available on Napster? Uh, me. Yeah, right. <laughs> and right. you and you and you. <laughs> so you know at least they they made it there. So that so that that's that's fine. 
But uh, yeah, I just that that was like the sort of memory that stuck with me with, with Consequence. So I always sort of rode that throughout the years. Mm. So when I listened to this album again and realized that not only you know was was he you know did he rap on it more than I remembered, um, I didn't realize he produced a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like yeah, his rhyming like he's he's really not bad at all, Espe- especially in those ones where they do the back and forth, mm-hmm. um, the, the the couple songs where they do that wordplay and uh, and and uh, jam. what's the pony rappers uh, and jam sorry yeah. uh, wordplay and jam. He's really not bad at all, and he he has. Uh, he has one song where he, he does have a uh, at least one song where he has a solo verse, and I'm yeah. telling you, man, he's it, it's, it's, he's on, not it's, it's similar. Stressed yeah, out, which, which song is stressed it? Stressed out, I believe. It's not stressed. Yes, yeah, his verse is stressed out. Is dope. And like, Fife, he's actually really good. You know, Fife recorded a verse for that song too, but it was only on their greatest hits version. It wasn't on this album. The baby, the baby fight version. Dunder lie, dunder low, dunder lie, dunder lee. Me not yeah. but, but trouble, but trouble don't follow me. It's not. I always. I'm familiar with. I think if when I used to have an iPod. I would switch out that the, the album version for the version that also included Fife because like it's a tribe song, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So I'm more mm-hmm. familiar with that version. So it, I actually listened. I was waiting for him to come in. Dun da lie, dun da lo, dun da lie, dun da lie. Yeah. But it wasn't there. Uh, anyway, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, consequence comes in. <laughs> and no hate on um, consequence. He's actually his no, career. No, he, he's man. dope. His new shit is dope. No hate. I think we just call it a yeah. bad moment. Everybody's got like, yeah. two point D. Like it's yeah. freestyle, right? Freestyle is really hard, right? And sometimes you just run out of juice. It's really right? hard. Sometimes maybe he had the, exactly maybe he had orange juice instead of the other thing, and he you know didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, yeah. Had, he had the, he had the Philly and had Minute Maid. <laughs> yeah, he had the Philly instead of the orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, Gary, do you have any uh, any other last licks? Or otherwise, I can take us out with my. Yeah, my no, no, we we covered it, man. Take us out. Yeah, I think yeah. Cool. Um, so then the, the, the only last thing I was going to mention is just, uh, just again, it is something that, um, the Mike Rapport always mentions, uh, when talking about Fife and, uh, it, it's definitely evident here. Fife loves sports, <laughs> loved sports. Um, I, I wanted to bring this up earlier when we were talking about, um, about, about something sports related. Oh, I went, when Gary was talking about the, uh, about the new NBA game. Um, but, uh, I, I think at least once in, in each track, Fife mentions something, something about an athlete or, or, you know, like, let's see, on, on Mind Power, uh, he, he mentions a random Philadelphia 76 of Derek Coleman, who had a, a nice, solid career. Like, it, 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 you know, it wasn't a scrub. But, like, for Fife, for New York to just randomly mention it, like, clearly this guy is just a sports fan to, mm-hmm. to, to, to mention it. I mean, even on, on the last album, he, he, um, he had a topical uh, uh, line where he goes, like, Tony Romo, when he hit and witten on, mm-hmm. uh, on We the People, if you remember that. Yep. Which is funny because Tony, Tony Romo, actually, the, the, the following year, Tony Romo retired and was a commentator. And Wh- Jason Witten, I think, the following year, <laughs> said the same thing. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to this album now, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a little dated. But the point is, like, again, talk about two Dallas Cowboys. He, he has nothing to do with them, but, like, he just loved fucking sports. So yeah. this is something I want to mention. Like, it, it's, it's evident in many Tribe albums. It's definitely evident here. Um, you know, just once again, re- rest in peace to Fife. Uh, there, there are a lot, lot, of, lot of cool cool things about that dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, things that um that people that, that people may not realize but like his love for for sports and don't don't make don't get me wrong he loved the knicks like he was huge yeah. huge knicks fan Massive. right but he's also a basketball fan he was also just a general basketball fan queens are um, up to the fully you think i own the mets yeah 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 exactly <laughs> yep <laughs> um so yeah so basically as, as as we said i mean this this was um it was definitely a darker album more more, more depressing feel mm-hmm. um but uh you know it's just the subject matter they 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 were they were talking about specifically and keeping it moving stressed out separate together you know these are just su- like songs with subject matter that you wouldn't really typically find with tribe or at least if you did it wouldn't be as in your face it would be more like sort of you know danced around not not like the, these tracks are like the, this is this is what i'm talking about this is the issue and mm-hmm. we're, we're all going to listen to it and, and eat this shit pie together <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what i mean um <laughs> but it's but it's just funny because at the same time it also features two of their biggest monster hits you know the, the, both featuring r&b artists so it's like it, it, it's it's weird that yes like it, they, the, the these days it has that kind of reputation of being like not not the the favorite uh tribe album but at the same time again like i mentioned earlier it's one of the biggest commercial commercial successes so um it's just funny how audiences do that <laughs> um well, yo, ain't but that, overall ain't, ain't that a ain't that a bitch as they say right like how uh yeah. it's, it's in some ways one of the greatest and in some ways it's uh it doesn't live up to some aspects of the of the previous one it's what makes it uh i don't know nuanced that's what makes it so interesting exactly Exactly, but we love it, um, and um, and yeah, yeah. It, as I, again, I, I Ben, thank you again for <laughs> for selecting this. Um, it was a it was a good. It took us a couple weeks to get through this because we had um we were focusing on, on doing some editing last week. But uh, but this this this, this was good. This this was really fun. Um, you know, it's it's funny because I, I yeah I mentioned once again being my uh 
my uh my favorite or my that first like sort of foray into like like real like real tribe um to the point where my first cd was actually almost um uh this be stars in life when i was like when i was getting cds like my first batch of cds i the only reason i didn't is because i believe sam goody ran out of it that mm. day right so i didn't end up getting that what i did though get was the album that I am going to suggest for my for the next one? <laughs> I think I know um, what it is. So you 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 may you may. Um, I, so you know I, I chose this album for a couple couple reasons. Um, I, I actually mentioned it, it uh, or the the this album earlier in this this episode. Um, but um, you know it came out the same same year. It uh, it's to me another classic. But you know we you know we we talked earlier about you know this episode or this podcast being about you know, albums that we appreciate that aren't necessarily like the, the, the tops of the top, but like our like whole special places in, in our hearts. I think this album is kind of both, um, and I'll, I'm getting to it. Um, this is definitely considered a classic, but I feel like people don't really talk about it as much, except for one song. Uh, and and uh, when I tell you the album, you'll know. <laughs> I'm gonna choose the score by Fuji's. Yes. Hell yeah. Finally. I'm not sure if that's where where where, where you are, where you're going. I know. I've been I've been teasing this shit. I've been teasing this shit for 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 several episodes. Yeah. I've been teasing it for like 2 minutes trying to do my, my lead in for, for for this next selection. Um but uh yeah, so the, the so the score ended up being the the first album or among the first set of albums that I that I ever got as, as CDs. Mm. Um and it just it was it was just always great to me. I mean, keep, people always like love killing them softly and they always remember that as like the classic song. Um but there there are other great songs on this album. There's Hell there's yeah. there's really good rap in this to the point where and I think I know there's going to be a, a point of contention where Praz, who's not known as is definitely known as being the worst of the three, even to my opinion, even he had some good verses <laughs> and some good like sort of intros to his verses on this album. So, um, so and, and then also what, what what we accomplished, um, something that Gary uh, rightfully brought up uh, several weeks ago. Um, you know, we, we haven't done a, a female artist really, a female hip hop artist yet. Um, so why not choose a group that includes one of the, if not possibly the greatest? <laughs> she says there, there are there could be an argument that Lauren Hill yeah. is the greatest female MC of all time. That that, that that's an argument. Wouldn't to be made. mad at that. So. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't be mad at it. I mean, you got people up there like 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 Jean Grey and Foxy Brown and and uh, and and Lil Kim and like there there, there are people who, who are up there in the conversation, but Lauren Hill is hundred percent in there too. So yeah. figure why, why might as well we, we we analyze that, analyze her, analyze the score. Again, one of my favorite albums from nineteen ninety six. Um, yeah, that's that, that's what I choose. Fuji's the score. Next album. Hell yeah! All right, guys, you heard it here first. Go listen to the score. If you haven't heard the score already, what the hell's wrong with you? If you have, listen to it again, and we'll come back and talk about it. Peace. 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 The Rap Lizards would like to thank our man, Red Walrus, for providing the beats and interlude music. Thank you so much, Fred. Support his music. You could find him on Bandcamp. You could download his albums. Great artist. Great artist.